the United States, there is 157 million pairs of these. <laughs> Boobs. They feed babies. Come on, they please men. In my case, they just get in my way. I run a lot, they bounce all over. Anyway, of the 157 million pairs of boobs, 40% are made up of dense breast tissue. Dense breast tissue? What is this dense breast tissue this woman speaks of? Some guys are thinking, I don't know, but I bet I'd like it. <laughs> all kidding aside, your breasts are, basically speaking, made up of either fatty tissue or dense breast tissue. The problem with dense breast tissue is it can kill. I know. I've seen it happen with my own two eyes. It was a cold February morning, the type of cold that cuts right through your coat and envelops your body in a layer of chill. We were walking across an asphalt parking lot when my mom suddenly stopped and looked at me with her beautiful blue eyes. She said, is a camera crew coming? I said, no, Mom, it's just a routine doctor's visit. No camera today. Well, that is how our year went, the year my mom battled breast cancer. See, she wanted cameras to follow her every move to show the true horrors of the disease. She wanted awareness. And ultimately, she wanted to show that if you catch your cancer early enough, you will survive it. See, I'm a health reporter for the CBS affiliate in Reno, Nevada, so I had the unique ability to tell her story. In fact, I already had the ending written. It was showing my mom staring a deadly disease in the face and beating it. Unfortunately, her story didn't end that way. It began in December of 2010. She went in for a double mastectomy. She only had breast cancer on one side, but she decided to remove both breasts to make sure the cancer never invaded her body again. By February, the chemotherapy had started to take a hold, so we went down to a hair salon and she shaved her head because she was going to decide how and when her hair came off. By May, she finished chemotherapy, and I ran my first ever marathon in her honor. In June, she went in for a PET scan that showed while on chemotherapy, the very treatment that was supposed to stop her cancer, instead, it spread all over her body. In August, we were told that treatment was no longer an option, and we were to take her home and keep her comfortable. So what did we do? We went camping up at Lake Tahoe. We pitched a tent, we built a huge bonfire, we boiled lobster in butter. Only my mother would boil lobster in butter. I will never do it any other way, however. After that trip, I brought her back home to Reno. And on the last time I was able to take her out of the house, we went to a diner for breakfast. I sat and ate my food and she kind of pushed it around on her plate. When we got up to leave, she said, Wendy, we forgot something. I looked back at the table. There was nothing there. I said, no, Mom, we got it all. Come on, let's go. She said, Wendy, we forgot something. I looked back again, seeing nothing, and out of pure frustration, I said, you tell me what we forgot, Mom. She said, we forgot me. And with that, she collapsed, and I reached out for her, and my head is spinning because I just really can't handle any of this. And at that very moment, a man behind me says, would you like to borrow my wheelchair? <laughs> I mean, what are the chances? Right at the very moment in life you need a wheelchair, a man offers you one. <laughs> a nurse would later tell me that that was my mom's soul separating from her physical body. When December came, Hospice came with it, and by now, my mom was pretty sick. So I had my camera crew come to her house on December 20th, and I got to sit and talk to my mom about what it's like to die. The hospice nurse was there on that day as well. She told us we had four more weeks with my mom. So that night, I kissed her goodbye and I left, and my brother, who was staying with her at this point, he carried her off to bed, and as they passed the front window of my mom's house, she looked outside, and there 
was my dad, who had died two years prior, standing there, waiting for her. My brother laid her in bed. She pulled the sheets up perfectly under her chin, and she placed her hands down at her side. And again, my mom took control, dying that night with the same grace and dignity that defined her in life. Well, as you might imagine, it took me quite a while to put together her story. <laughs> but I finally did, and it aired on the one-year anniversary of her death. But something happened a few days later. I began to wonder how my mom's cancer spread so quickly. See, six months prior to her cancer diagnosis, she had a clean mammogram. A clean mammogram. And through all the research of her story, I came across these words, dense breast tissue. I didn't really know what they meant, but on this one day, they hit me over the head like a frying pan, took my breath away. I ran to the nearest phone I could find, and I called her surgeon. I said, sir, what type of breast tissue did my mom have? He said, heterogeneously dense breasts. And what are the chances that in six months, my mom's cancer grew to be four tumors in her breast, a tumor in her neck, and of the 54 lymph nodes you took out, 38 were cancerous. What are the chances that could happen in six months? Wendy, only God knows for sure. But science tells us that's impossible for a single cancer cell to grow into a one centimeter tumor, it takes between five and seven years. Oh my God, oh my God. My mom didn't die of breast cancer. She died because she had dense breast tissue and no one ever told her. And here's the problem with that type of tissue. It's a risk factor for getting breast cancer. Secondly, it hides tumors on a mammogram. Doctors just can't see through it to see the cancer. According to the Journal of the American Medical Association, mammography only picks up 48% of tumors in women with dense breast tissue. That means it misses every other one. How can that be? Well, cancer shows up white on a mammogram. So does dense breast tissue. Take a look for yourself. The breast on the left-hand side is made up of fatty tissue. You can clearly see that cancerous tumor there. The breast on the other side is made up of dense breast tissue. There is a cancerous tumor in the exact same spot as the other breast. Can you see it? No, neither could the radiologist. So tumors, like my mom's, live for years, undetected, growing and spreading, and ultimately killing. So by now I'm sure you're wondering, how in the heck do I know if I have dense breast tissue, right? I see you squirming in your seats. Well, size does not matter. You can't tell by poking around in there, doing your monthly exams. You can't tell if they're perky or droopy. Your breast tissue is just the type of tissue you're, you happen to be born with. Kind of like being born with blonde hair or brown hair. Fortunately, we can change our hair color. We cannot change our breast density. So in order to know, you have to get something done like a mammogram. And here's what made me really, really angry. If you've had a mammogram, your doctor knows what type of tissue you have, and you likely don't. They don't have to tell you. I have been told, well, this information might scare women, or it might cause too many biopsies. I don't know about you but I don't like secrets about my own body being kept from me. So again, I went to the phone. I called a state assemblyman down at the Nevada legislature who just so happened to be sponsoring a bill to make it mandatory that doctors tell women what type of tissue they have. I said, hey, let me come down and help you get this bill passed. He agreed, and I did, testifying several times down in my state capitol. And on June 3rd of 2013, my children and I went and witnessed Governor Brian Sandoval sign AB 147 into law in honor of my mom. 
There is. <laughs> There is a grassroots movement happening in this country. It started with Dr. Nancy Capello in Connecticut. She was the first to get a breast density notification law on the books in her state. To date, there are 14 other states with similar laws. But here is what all of you can do right now. You can pick up the phone. You can call your doctor and ask what type of tissue you have. If you've had a mammogram, they know the answer to that question. And if you have dense breast tissue, there are screenings out there specifically designed for you. One is called a Sonocine. It's an automated whole breast ultrasound. Another is a manual ultrasound. And currently in this country, there are companies spending millions of dollars to develop other screening modalities specifically for women with dense breast tissue. That right there should tell you what a huge issue this is. Now, in most cases, insurance does not cover it. But I know my mom would have paid the 150 bucks to go get one of these things done. At least, it would have been her choice, her decision. Instead, her head was in the sand. And I, I had to rewrite the ending to her story. Instead of a tale of triumph, it is now a word of warning that nearly half of you have dense breast tissue and your mammogram may not be catching your cancer. I have dense breast tissue. So now, right after I get my yearly mammogram, I go and get a Sonocini as well. Because when my children ask me if I have breast cancer, which they do all the time, in my house I swear, it's like, hey kids, you want some milk? Yes please, and you have breast cancer? <laughs> I wanna be able to honestly answer no. And I want the same for all of you. On behalf of my mom and me, thank you for listening.